welcome to this edition of Dufferin Life. I'm your host, Tina Avery. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are going into the June season and upcoming from Orangeville Music Theatre are two amazing productions. And joining me today from Orangeville Music Theatre um, is Bailey and Keith. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. It's wonderful. This is the first time you've been on my show, so I'm very excited about this. Yes. Um, so, Bailey, tell us a little bit about who music that uh, Orangeville Music Theatre is and what, what it is that you do. So Orangeville Music Theatre is a local um, community theatre group and we've actually been in the community for coming up to 45 years and so we like to put on uh, two shows a season, mm -hmm. um, sorry, two shows, a main stage and a junior show, okay. twice in a season. So ideally we do January and June, mm -hmm. and it's all volunteer, all community based, everyone is welcome to come and join, we're always looking for new members, and it's great. Wonderful. So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing by the name that everything is a musical? Uh, there was once that we didn't do a musical, <laughs> but yes, generally speaking, everything is a musical. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So Keith, tell me a little bit about what you do for the theater and what you're doing for the upcoming show and tell us a little bit about it. Uh, this is my second show directing yeah. and um, it, uh, it's Little Shop of Horrors and uh, we're having an absolute blast with this one. Okay. We've got a cast of about 30 and um, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those fun shows. It's a typical, you know, boy meets girl, boy raises plant, plant murders everybody <laughs> type of show. So that's just, that's normal. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's... yeah, normal, normal community <laughs> theater stuff. But uh, no, we're, we're having a blast. The cast is absolutely spectacular. So tell us about Little Shop of Horrors. When is it, when can uh, we get tickets for it? And tickets it are play? available now mm -hmm. um, through, the, uh, through the box office at the, um, the Opera House. Theater, Opera yeah. House. Yep. yeah. The Opera House. And uh, we open the 9th, the of, 9th June of June and runs through until the 17th, so we're getting close. Amazing. So tell me a little bit about the rehearsal process, and you guys can, and you can both share with me a little bit, um, <laughs> because you're running two shows at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk a little bit about how that works, especially with a cast of 30. That's, that's a lot of people. And yeah, well, we're lucky uh, where we rehearse at one of the local schools here that we have two rooms. So okay. if you're about this high, you're going into one area and you're doing Little Mermaid. And if you're older, you're coming into our side and uh, for Little Shop of Horrors. But it's, uh, we have two different production teams, two different um, groups that are looking after. And we've got great stage moms that are helping the little ones. And, uh, and then we're, we're a little more obviously on the older side of them. We're more self-sufficient. Yes, <laughs> we don't need our moms at this point. Right, so Little Shop of Horrors, is that for all ages? Is that a show that everyone can come out to see? Uh, well, I wouldn't uh, say all ages, but I would say, you know, 12, 13 and up, definitely. Um, kids today have seen and done a little bit more than when they were my age, so right. I, I'm not surprised by uh, by seeing younger kids in, in shows of this type. Yeah, well, I mean, it's always good to let people know, because some people may not know yeah. about the show and what it's all yeah, about. There are some dark yeah. aspects. I yeah. mean, you know, the, the plant does kill people, so <laughs> it's... <laughs> As we laugh, yeah, the yeah. plant's killing people, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There are some dark sides. For sure, for sure. So, I mean, that's that's definitely good to know. And, you know, uh, Bailey, why don't you tell me a little bit about The Little Mermaid Junior? Yes, yeah, so it's very exciting. That also has a cast, actually, of 29 kids. We had a fantastic turnout, and they are ranging from age 5 to 16. Wow. So with junior shows, everybody in the cast has to be under 18. Okay. So all of your adults are played by older teens, and you know it goes down from there. So um, in January we had done Annie Junior, and there were a lot of kids that came back. We got a lot of new kids. It's really exciting. Well, let's talk about how we get the kids and how they go and what type of an audition they go through for Orange Hill Music Theater. Yeah. So I was uh, I was lucky enough to choreograph the last production of of Annie Junior, and. Um, there's, I, I couldn't believe the turnout for, for, I mean, Annie's very popular, yes. right? So there was a lot of kids that had come out for that, but the talent that, that these, these little kids have, it's just unbelievable and, and no filter, right? They just, they come in and, and this is who I am and, and uh, you know, they, they have to do, based on the production staff for myself, you know, we, we look for, sometimes it's a cold reading, mm -hmm. we give them a little part from the show just so we can hear how they read, um, but they have a full dance um, audition that they have to go through and then they have to prepare a song and, and you know, sing that way and 
I mean, you're a little more lenient if they forget the words and those sort of things. But uh, we start them early. Yeah. The same exact yeah. same process as for the adults. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So. Well, I mean, I think that's important because even if it's uh, if like if it's community theater, to give them the experience of what they would ex yeah. if they went say to audition for a professional theater show. Well, not only uh, that, you're teaching them when they get into the working world, right? Like they're they're not now afraid to stand up in front of people to give a presentation, or or if they have to prepare something, or like it's it's a life skill that you're teaching them young, right? right. Coming out for community theater. So let's talk a little bit about that, and and um, if there's somebody that's watching that has children or somebody that's that's interested but has has no experience, um, is that, that's okay? Um, Please come. <laughs> Everybody has to start somewhere. Yeah. Right. I was actually, my first OMT show was, I, it was The King and I, and it feels like 100 years ago, but I was it young. Was. It was 100 years ago, I know. <laughs> you look great for your Thank age. Thank you, yeah. don't I? Um, so I was doing Toys Choir at the time, mm -hmm. and then I did one show with OMT, and I got a little bit older, and theater you know, wasn't quite my thing for a little bit, and then I got right back into it, but like I had never auditioned and it was terrifying, but it was great, and it was a wonderful experience, and then once I remembered how much I love theater, you haven't been able to keep me away since, so. <laughs> and we have kids that have moved from Annie Junior into Little Shop. Yeah, okay. So they were just on the precipice of Annie Junior, and right. they were now too old for Little Little Mermaid, and they're, they're now in the ensemble for, uh, for our show, so it's, it's, you see how they grow. Yeah, absolutely, and and I'm, I've, you've just sparked another question, but we're going to come back to that one because I'm going to talk to Bailey about what um, when we're talking about somebody who's coming in for an audition. Yeah. Maybe there's somebody like for me. I I was a dancer. I grew up teaching dance. I did dance, so no problem. I could go out and audition and dance. But what if you're not good at both? How oh, I am not a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> I am still in the show. Um, the dance auditions sound very scary, mm -hmm. but they're like usually a group um, audition, and you get taught the choreo there. Like, so okay. you get taught. You you don't come in and say do a pas de bourree, which I still don't know what it is, but I know how to make my feet do it. <laughs> um, so it's one of those things that you know. There's also a lot of understanding that, especially if you're doing it for your first time you know, you might not get it right away. And it's more so like everybody that's doing um, as the production team knows how to work with people. Mm -hmm. So they can hear like if you miss a note, but the rest of your song is fantastic. Like everybody misses notes sometimes. Right. Everybody forgets lines sometimes, or you miss, miss your step, step. Yeah. Where, you know, so there's a lot of things there where everybody's like, oh, if I'm not perfect, I was like, nobody's perfect. Nobody's even perfect during the shows. I wish we were. Yeah. <laughs> but so it's, it's really not as scary as it seems like, although, you still get nerves. And a lot of times you're <laughs> looking to see just how people take direction. Absolutely. So if it's, they missed a step, okay, no, start with your right foot. And then they start with the right foot, you're good. You see right? yeah, You can it up. see that yeah. there's progression, mm -hmm. right? So that's kind of what you look for. Absolutely. Okay, so this is a question for the two of you. Why is Orangeville Music Theater important to the community? Mm. Oh, which one of us? It is so, so, so. Orangeville is a fantastic town, it's growing, but there is still not a whole lot to do depending on what you are looking for. Mm -hmm. um, I know that Theatre Orangeville has fantastic programs, but they're more professional um, a lot of the time and things like that, so mm -hmm. that can be even more scary, right. right, where it's like, oh, I don't know. So we have that outlet there, and we also, it's a long process, so we started doing auditions in February, Mm -hmm. Rehearsals start in March, and then our shows are in June. So I think that's a great thing that, you know, it's twice a week, minus holidays and things like that, but generally speaking, twice a week. And, like, where do you get to meet friends that aren't necessarily in your school? Mm -hmm. Or some of the kids aren't from town. I mean, there's people in our show that live in Toronto that I would never know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have great friend building. You gain confidence. You also have to learn to let things go. Right. Which is very hard because you are going to miss a step. Right. And then you keep going. And we were talking about that just off off camera before yeah. we started the show about how it's easy to come on a show and, and, and you're speaking, you're speaking, and then that one word comes out incorrectly, mm -hmm. but you just keep going and you have to not let that affect the rest of what you're doing. If you're going to make a, a mistake, make it big. That's <laughs> yeah. the, well, that is. That's the Absolutely. rule of theater, right? If you're going to make and have fun with it. There's, yeah. it's, I mean, that's what people love about live theater mm -hmm. is they see the mistakes that are being made on stage. And if they feel that they are in on it, they have a much better time. Right. Than if you try to cover it up and, and right, that you just kind of Well, that's have it. Fun. And some people that are watching in the audience wouldn't even know if you made a mistake. Like, if they don't know, 
you For know, sure. maybe that person was supposed to tur turn the wrong way while mm -hmm. the rest of everybody else went, you know, to the yeah. right type yeah, of thing. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So how long have you been doing this, Keith? <laughs> um, 200 years. <laughs> <laughs> no, I started uh, directing and choreographing in 1984. Okay. Yeah, so I've been doing it for a very long time. For a very long time. Very long time. So do you ever do um, productions that are not musical? Mm -hmm. Actually, do. I just, uh, I'm, I'm starting to, uh, I had my own theater group for about 30 years. Okay. And the pandemic took its toll. Mm -hmm. And um, I just finished uh, directing a production of The Diary of Anne Frank. Okay. With Theater Aurora. Oh, nice. And um, so I kind of bounced between Theater Aurora and Orange Film Music Theater. So We're those very are lucky my, to have him. My, <laughs> my, those are my two homes. Right? Awesome. So then I'm going to ask you, what is the difference in directing a musical versus something like a drama or a romantic comedy or something oh, like that? I, I, uh, doing a show like the Diary of Anne Frank, which I just did, and at the same time I was doing Annie Junior. Oh my! So That's you talk <laughs> about you talk about going from one extreme to the other. Um, for a, a drama, you you're in that same moment the entire time. Right. With a musical, you're taken out of those moments through song okay. and dance. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't get the opportunity you know, to do that in, in a drama. So you approach it very differently. It, it's, you still, the, the, the way you direct is still the same. However, the discipline is very different in right. the process because it's, it's just heavier. Yeah, and I would imagine there's just, there's so many more moving parts and pieces because when you're dancing and singing, then mm -hmm. there's constant music coming in. There's like, there's things that are happening and then a cast of 30 to 25 to 30 uh, And people. the version we're doing right now of Little Shop, it's, it's a revival ish mm -hmm. type um, of show so the ensemble is much more prevalent in this version yeah. than in the regular Broadway production so we have a lot of times the ensemble is there right, right. where they wouldn't normally be so that's been a challenge for us and it's not a massive stage right? no it's not yeah, yeah we can get yeah. a lot of, <laughs> a lot of people in a not huge yeah. space so we're, very close yeah, yeah. so we're, we're, we have to get creative okay so uh, Bailey, tell me, remind me again, the names of the shows, the times and the dates, or oh, not the times, but the dates, <laughs> of the, the dates that they're playing and where people can get tickets. Yes, so we've got Little Shop of Horrors opening on June 9th, running to the 17th, and uh, Little Mermaid will be the 23rd to 25th of June. So. Okay. And uh, tickets can be got at orangevillemusictheater.com, or you can call the Opera House box office directly. Mm -hmm. It's 519-942-3423. Wow, Wonderful. Job. And we, now I we know who does the advertising. Right? <laughs> I, I, I do the exact same thing when I have the theater on the, the show. I'm just like, let me tell you about what <laughs> the website and the phone number and that sort of thing. So, I mean, it's, it's an amazing thing to take on two productions at the same time um, and to have all of these people involved. And um, I really am happy that you were able to come out and share what the shows were about and... Um, kind of help to create the awareness um, so if maybe other people want to get involved they can or if they just want to buy tickets and come out and enjoy the show they can do that as well well thank for you sure. for the opportunity thank appreciate you. it it was truly my pleasure and don't you go anywhere we'll be right back is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Coming up on the next edition of The Next Element, I have Jamie Andrews from Jemba Solutions playing the drums for us and telling us all about percussion instruments right here on Rogers Cable TV.
Welcome back to Dufferin Life. Thanks. If you're just tuning in, you're tuning in at a great time, an awesome time. So we are going to be talking to Ricky Shade. Ricky, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Tina. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm glad you could come back on the show. Um, and we're talking, I'm going to let you tell everybody what we're talking about today. We are talking about Celebrate Your Awesome, which is Dufferin's Pride and Diversity Day. We're celebrating pride and uniqueness and everything that makes everybody awesome here in Dufferin. It takes place on Saturday, June 17, mm -hmm. from 1 p.m. until 10 p.m. And it's taking place on 2nd Street and Alexandra Park, right by Orangeville Town Hall. So that's that's important that you, you make a note of that because normally it happened on Mill Street. Yes. So you've moved, you've changed locations onto 2nd Street and Alexandra Absolutely. Park. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so we thought that it was time for the celebration to grow. We've been on Mill Street for many years. We did do it virtually for a couple years, of mm -hmm. course. But when we went, have been in person, it's been on Mill Street. Mill Street's been wonderful, but I don't know if you were there last year. We were packed in like it was, sardines. Yeah, like I it literally yeah. walked down. I was like, oh, that's a lot of people. <laughs> so we're honestly thrilled to be moving locations to Second Street and Alexandra Park. We're excited to have like one big stage. So it's going to be like one big stage instead of two smaller stages okay, that we would great. normally do. It's going to be an action packed day. We're so excited. So let's talk about this because this event is for all ages for the most part, correct? Yes. yes. So let's, let's talk about what we can expect. Um, so yeah, Celebrate Your Awesome is a fun event for the whole family. Um, it's definitely family friendly and there's a whole variety of things going on. There's going to be performers throughout the day, there's musical performances, there's going to be dance performances, there's going to be drag shows, there will be an awesome human library, there's going to be so many vendors. I think we're completely sold out on vendor space so it's been an amazing response for vendors. We're going to have food trucks. It's going to be a really awesome day. It sounds yeah. amazingly awesome. Awesome. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So let's talk about the human library and how that's changed because as most people know, the library is under construction right now. So let's talk about number one, what it is and then how it's changed. So the Awesome Human Library, if you think about a library, we go to a library to read books, right? In the Awesome Human Library, the books are human. So every human has a life story to tell. So uh, the, the way that it's going to work at this year's event, normally the human library would be at the library, but mm -hmm. this year the books, which are people, mm -hmm. are going to be walking around uh, at the event. So they're actually going to be walking around wearing like a, a name tag that says, I'm a book. And you can just go up to them and talk to them about their life story at the event. Okay. Why is that important? I think it's important because what we're doing with Celebrate Your Awesome is we're trying to uh, make it so that people know that Orangeville and Dufferin County is a place where it's okay to be different, it's okay to be gay, it's okay to be trans, it's okay to have different religious beliefs, it's okay to come from a different culture. And so with this awesome human library, you're going to have the opportunity to really be invited into the life stories of a diverse range of people so that you can kind of experience someone else's story and that might normalize something that's different for you to kind of see things from another person's perspective. And I think that's so important. I think. I I think, I'm so glad that you mentioned about all the different types of books that will be there and, and all the different types of people that are supported um, by Celebrate Your Awesome. And um, I mean, I, I always love to bring and help create awareness on the show. And I really um, think it's so important for people to have an experience and to actually speak to a human rather than reading a book yeah. just gives you that little bit more insight. And when it's personalized, I think it becomes a little bit more real. Yeah. I would definitely agree. I think there's some kind of deeper connection that you can get with interacting with another person, for sure. Yeah, So, and I think that's such a unique idea to have. Like, I mean, I always thought it was. And um, But yeah, so when you see everybody walking around that says, I am a book, please stop and say hello and, and, and find out the um, what a little bit about them and, and, and learn a little bit more that I think will make us better people. Absolutely. Because I yeah. think that um, acceptance is is so important. Because um, you you hit the nail on the head when you said, um, "Be who you are," and you know, yeah. just walk around in your own skin and not be hesitant to be who you are. Yeah, and I think that at like right now with everything that's going on in the world, I think it's especially important. I know when we started the event, there was definitely this feeling that like 
we're all moving in the right direction and that things are becoming more accepting and positive. But in recent years, there's been some pretty scary stuff happening in different parts of the world mm -hmm. and legislation being introduced that's anti-LGBT. Um, and so I think it's more important now than ever to be doing this work and to be bringing this to the community. And I think we really do have a really wonderful, accepting community here. And I'm really excited to celebrate that with everybody. Yeah, and I think we need to even grow that community because I think some people, I think some people are afraid. I think, For you sure. know, like I think, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I just, I'm just speculating that um, maybe they feel like they're accepting, but they're afraid they're going to say the wrong thing to somebody that might be offensive. And I, I think we, we put a lot, I mean, it's very important not to be offensive and to accept everybody, but let's just be clear. Like it's important not to be afraid to talk to somebody because yeah. you might offend them because there are a lot of people out there um, that put a lot of pressure on what words can be used and, mm -hmm. you know, and then people are unsure of how to speak to somebody who might mm -hmm. be different from who they are. And I, uh, do you agree? I think the most important thing is the kind of place that you're coming from. Mm -hmm. Like, it's okay if you don't know all of the correct terminology, but if you're coming from a place of love and acceptance, I think that's going to shine through. And even if there are any misunderstandings, I don't think it's something that can't be uh, fixed. Like, as long as your intentions are good, mm -hmm. I think I would say don't be afraid. Um, coming from a small town, I think it's easy to be afraid to speak to different types of people, mm -hmm. but if you go out in the world and if you go to cities and different countries, the amount of diversity in like the human species is incredible. Mm -hmm. And uh, being in a small town, you don't get exposed to that. But I would say like, come to our event, speak to people, experience new things. And like I said, as long as you're coming from a place of love, it's gonna be great. Yeah, yeah. I agree, I agree. And, and I wanna stress that yes, we're having a very serious conversation about what we're talking about, but this is a fun event. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not, you're not, you know, you're not going to be bombarded with people asking you, like, how you feel about certain things. Yeah, of it's course. more like come out, have some fun, learn a few things. Yeah. Right? Or maybe not, just come out and have some fun and support the community. Yeah, absolutely. Watch some music, have some food, get a little face tattoo, buy some cool merchandise from our vendors, do some dancing. It's going to be a great time. So let's talk about the types of vendors that you have out, out at the show. So we're going to have a huge variety of vendors. There's definitely going to be lots of artists and artisans of a wide variety. Um, I'm not in charge of the vendors, so I don't know specifically <laughs> who's going to be there, but I know I've, we've got photographers, we've got artists, we've got crafters, we've got uh, local businesses that are sent, setting up like vendor areas. There's also going to be a community information section where uh, community organizations like I believe like decafs and like various organizations mm -hmm. in the community are going to have booths there where they're giving out information pamphlets and providing education as well yeah and I think that just speaks to our community that businesses just come out and support Absolutely. All, all, like they support so many things um, we're very lucky where we are absolutely sure. so let's talk about how what what you do for the committee and how uh, how you're involved so I've been on the committee since its founding in 2017 I believe it was and I don't have like a specific role I'm more of like a general support person mm -hmm. I do enjoy doing like PR and and press appearances like I'm doing here because I love public speaking and being out in the public and um, I kind of try to be part of the public face of the committee and I provide support to the various committee members. And that's important. So let's talk about committee members and volunteers. Do you need volunteers and committee we members? We absolutely would yeah. love volunteers. If you would like to volunteer, visit www.celebrateyourawesome.ca. On the website, there's a page for volunteering uh, and there's a form that you fill out to apply to be a volunteer. We need volunteers to help us set up, to help us throughout the day, to help us tear down. There's a lot of work that needs to be done, um, especially because we always make this a completely free event. Mm -hmm. Everything's totally free, so we really do rely on volunteers and sponsors as well. And let's talk about that because I, I, you, we take it. I think we take it for granted sometimes that some of the events that we have here in town are free, and you can just walk in and do it whatever you want. There's a lot of fundraising and sponsorship that has to be done yes. um, to make these. Events events happen. Absolutely. So there's so many local businesses and organizations that support us by providing funding. Um, not only just businesses and organizations, but also just local citizens.
citizens who provide funding like through private donations which is so so helpful and that is what enables us to make it a free event and uh, yeah everybody who works for celebrate your awesome it's a completely volunteer basis no but it's like it's totally non-for-profit nobody's making money off of it we're just trying to provide this wonderful day to the community so uh, yeah the support honestly has been overwhelming and we're so grateful to the community okay so now we're gonna get we're gonna talk about one of my favorite parts of the day the drag shows yes <laughs> <laughs> And I don't know if you've never been to a drag show, but please, you do have to come out and experience it. You just get this level of joy and happiness and you just like it's just so much fun absolutely I definitely agree I think it's beautiful to celebrate uh, the diversity of performers and we love our drag queens with Troy Boy Entertainment they're gonna be doing two performances a daytime performance and a nighttime performance and I'm thrilled I can't wait the nighttime performance is that a little bit more for older it's it'll be a little bit more risque <laughs> yes definitely parental discretion is advised for the evening show but it's still gonna be a family-friendly show just maybe for the evening show we recommend 12 and up yeah I yeah. think that's important too because I've seen different drag shows and some of them you know you go and you have good and it's always fun um, but some of them can be a little bit more as Ricky said risque um, so you want to make sure that um, maybe your six-year-old yes <laughs> <laughs> but I rest assured during the day the performance is completely family friendly and mm -hmm. there's also going to be drag queen story time during the day as well oh I love that yeah, I, I love, love it. it like and and the books they read are so phenomenal like I just yeah. It's, it's so important to start young to, to kind of build that mindset in that everybody is equal. Absolutely. You know, when I was growing up, things were not quite as accepting as they are now. So I think it's absolutely beautiful to see parents teaching their children about the diversity of people and to be accepting of people because I think it's going to forge a much more positive future for humanity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's that's really important work that, you're, that everybody is taking on, but in such a way that... Um, it's fun. It's yeah. like I just I can't, I can't. I've said it about fourteen times now, but <laughs> it is such a fun day, and there's so much to do, and the, the, now it's even bigger. So there's so much to see and and be a part of. And I will say, like I am very envious of the drag queens and their makeup skills. <laughs> <laughs> All it takes is a little practice, Tina. You could do it. Maybe take some classes. This is yeah. it. This is it. And I, I, yeah, because I just, I mean, even the ones that you, like, even if, when you see it on TV, and I'm just like, wow, how do they think of that? Like, just it's phenomenal the way, yeah. yeah. You know, I'm a visual artist, like, I'm a painter, mm -hmm. and to me, like, makeup it's really just another form of applying paint so it comes naturally to me but definitely to a lot of people it's it's definitely mystifying but mm -hmm. it's really just it's uh, another type of art form yeah, yeah it is mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful so I'm gonna get you because we're just under a minute so I'm just gonna tell you get you to tell us again where and when the event is to make sure everybody has that information join us for celebrate your awesome taking place June 17th at Alexandra Park and 2nd Street right by Town Hall in downtown Orangeville the event takes place from 1 p.m. until 10 p.m. We'll see you there. Absolutely. Ricky, I want to thank you so much for joining us and helping us share this important information, but just kind of getting that information out there. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Tina. It's been a pleasure. Anytime, anytime. And thank you for joining us. Until next time, bye-bye for now. So we're still on. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. It's closing time. 
and you stayed out longer than you planned. So now you can't drive, and the buses have stopped running. You could always 